Hello everyone and welcome back to Eat Sleep Brief. Today we have a very exciting video. We're going to be showing you guys how I mix salt water and hopefully you can watch this video and learn something from it and see that mixing your own salt isn't that hard. Let's get right to it. So obviously here the way I start it is with bare RODI water. Um, so here you can see the jugs of water. Also needed, you're going to need a mixing container. I use a container from the Home Depot. I think there's about 30 gallons in here. You're also going to need to mix the water. So I have two uh, power head pumps here. Uh, you can see I got this guy here. Uh, actually, I got these from, I think from a friend that was throwing them away. So I put them to good use and you got here like a little wave maker uh, pump as well. So we, I obviously started off by filling my, <coughs> excuse me, filling my main container of 30 gallons of um, RODI water. So obviously this is the most purest form of water which is what you want to be using uh, when making salt water for your reef tank because it's just going to give you more success uh, down the road. Uh, what we do then is put the power heads in the, in the container and obviously when, when mixing salt water you want to make sure it's very thoroughly mixed. I highly recommend you looking at the specific brand of salt you're using to see how long you need to mix it for. For today's video we are going to be using uh, Red Sea Coral Pro Salt and that one generally it tells you to mix it uh, anywhere from 30 minutes to 4 hours but never going longer than 4 hours and like I said this is specific to this salt um, so I highly recommend you read the instructions on your salt. Um, another thing I also want to mention for the Red Sea they recommend you to uh, heat up the water to about 76 degrees but I've mixed quite a bit of this salt and I've noticed heating it and not heating it, I get the same readings. Uh, so obviously to save uh, time and obviously energy, um, and by energy I mean you know electricity, I no longer uh, warm up the water because like I said I've done various tests and I don't notice a, a change. I'm sure if you're mixing the water and you know your container is let's say 30 degrees it's going to make a big difference. So uh, in my case in here in California uh, it's not a problem and I don't need to heat it and like I said I get the same exact results. So really quickly I think for anyone in the reefing hobby you have to pretty much have some of these. I got these on Amazon fairly cheap they come in like a pack of five. It's a, a Y extension or Y adapter whatever you want to call it but it really lets you save outlet space um, and reduce a lot of the clutter. So if you guys are wondering about these, um, check them out um, on Amazon. Uh, you can find them. They're fairly inexpensive and I think they're a must to have for every reefer. So we have here is actually, this is where all the labor comes in. All the work comes in here um, and you're going to see it's not that difficult. So you want to be sure whatever weight uh, you're using, weight system, you want to make sure it's zeroed out. Um, with, in my case, with the bowl on top of it. So you don't want to zero it out, then put the bowl, um, because that's obviously the bowl is going to add weight. So you want to zero it out with the bowl. So you can see uh, for my specific salt brand and the specific gravity that I'm looking for, I need to mix 9.6 pounds of uh, red sea salt to give me a 1.025 salinity uh, for 30 gallons. So you're going to want to check on your bag and every every manufacturer is different. I've only ever bought Red Sea, so I can't, you know, talk about other brands or how they do it. I'm pretty sure it's probably by cups. I mean, at the very least, it has to be by weight. I know I would want it by weight because it's it's obviously fairly accurate. Um, so here, I'm just trying to mix 9.6 pounds of salt, and uh, what this is going to do is, like I said, give me a salinity of uh, 1.025. On average, you're going to see salinities. Um, if you have fish, you, you, you can get away with, I've seen 1.020 all the way to you know 1.023 uh, generally because fish really you know don't really care about salinity too much. Um, obviously, it can't be super, super low because then you're going to run into problems. But for corals, corals generally want to be um, around 24 uh, to 25. So I shoot for the 25. I've seen guys run it, run it to 26, 27. Um, in reality, you just want to be in this ballpark. I recommend 24, 25. Um, SPS is more towards the 25. LPS softy stuff is more towards 24. Um, but if you just generally run it all in 24, everything's going to be happy. Your fish, your corals. Um, so yeah, that's generally what, what, I, uh, what I stick to. So um, that's pretty much it as far as 
you know what you do in this step it's like as you can see here it's a very straightforward it's a matter of me just getting the proper weight and uh, once I get the right weight it's a matter of throwing it in the uh, jugs and or the container of water and obviously having the power heads uh, do the mixing for me so as you guys can see now we're here to the fun part so what we do now we get we grab our whole whatever container cup whatever you have and you want to slowly put it in to the, your container of water. I've dumped it in before, but I noticed the power heads get pissed off. And um, I don't know, I just noticed better results like this, put it in slowly. Um, I've also read on, on forums that this is probably the way you want to do it, slowly add it in there. Um, you know, you give the initial salt you're putting in there a little bit of time to mix, so you're not just dumping it all in there. And, um, you know, just overall, generally I've seen better results doing it like this instead of just throwing it all in there. Although, if you kind of think about it, you'd probably get the same results either way because it's going to mix no matter what. Um, but you can see it also releases dust, the, the salt. So, you know, try not breathe in too much because it'll get in your face, so it'll kind of get everywhere. Um, and try and do this somewhere where, you know, you don't mind making a little bit of a mess of salt, um, water, you know, none of that because um, the last thing you want to do is make a huge mess, get the wife mad, and then they're not going to let us keep these uh, beautiful reef tanks. So here's the waiting game. It typically takes about 30 minutes for my specific salt. So it's a matter of just watching it swirl, waiting. And typically for the Red Sea salt, I know it very well. I'll test it at about the 20 minute mark. So at the 20 minute mark, I, I'll test it. And at that point, I use here my Red Sea as well, refractometer. And at this point, I'm at, I know if I have to either add a little bit more salt, you know, add a little bit more RODI water to get the proper level. Now guys, at the very beginning, you notice your levels aren't, you know, point or 1.025 every time. Don't sweat it. If you're 1. you know, uh, 0, 0.023, 24, I mean, as long as you're in that ballpark, you're gonna be pretty good. As time goes on, you are gonna get a lot better and I wouldn't be too, too worried. Um, about the number unless you're getting this ridiculous uh, reading of course. So another important part and tool you're going to kind of need is the refractometer. Um, this is used to measure the salinity and it gives you a very very accurate uh, reading of it and these are not too expensive I believe they're like 20, 30, 40 dollar ish. I don't remember how much it was. I have the Red Sea one. It works great. I have no complaints. Come with little water um, sampler thing uh, you also get a little screwdriver with it uh, so you can easily calibrate it because another thing i want to mention guys these do need to get calibrated uh, before every single use you can see this is a screwdriver used has an instruction on how to use it how to calibrate it and this one i use rodi water to calibrate it works great it's never had an issue with it and highly highly uh, recommend it so while I'm mixing your salt, you're going to notice sometimes it'll settle. The salt itself will settle on the bottom. So I use the power heads here. You can see I kind of guide them on, on the bottom of this, this container. What I'm doing, I, I lift it up, I swirl it around, and this way I don't have to put my hand in there. But you want to make sure that any salt that does settle, because you are going to get salt that settles. You're going to clearly see it white. It's going to look like salt on the bottom. And you want to make sure all that is very, very thoroughly mixed, you know, to get you the right uh, mixture of salt. So here you can see this is the side of the uh, Red Sea um, salt bag I have. You can see here it gives you the different uh, weights for the different salinity as well as their recommendation, you know, for coral, fish systems and everything. So it makes it very simple. So the last step is, in, in my case, if you are storing this in the container, obviously you don't have to do this step, but I store them in these individual jugs. Um, I don't know, really no reason. I think it's neater. Um, I feel it keeps it fresher as well by keeping each one individually sealed. Uh, generally, I'll store these for about no more than two months. Typically, they'll last me about a month and a half, um, you know, with all the water changes I do. And um, the only thing I'm using here that you guys did not see, I do have a, another pump. That I install with the hose just because the original pump you guys saw at the beginning of the video I don't have a, a hose for that it's way too big so I use a smaller one and you can see all I'm doing is, is uh, pumping the water out so I'll go through all these and um, just pump the water all in there and that's pretty much it as far as mixing it um, you know a lot of people think this this uh, salt mixing is very complicated very hard um, it's as you can see there's really no I mean, yes, there's a way of making the mistakes, but as long as you're aware of what you're doing 
and you read the instructions on the proper weight for your specific salt mixture you're using, you're gonna be fine. Um, so yeah, guys, that's pretty much it for today's video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them down in the comment box below. Also, guys, be sure to check me out on Instagram. I'll have a link in the description. And um, that's pretty much gonna be it for today, guys. If I earned your subscription with this video, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. It really helps me out. And that's gonna be it. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Happy reefing.